Liqui Moly, the creme de la creme of motor oils. But is it worth that hefty price tag for a daily driver, especially when compared to something like Castrol Edge? In this video, we find out together. Let's get into it. What's up everybody, my name is Fritz and welcome to the channel. Where in today's video, we're gonna be testing out the gold standard of motor oil, or I should say green standard of motor oil in the form of liquid Molly Molly Gen. Now, normally in the M235i, I'm using a 540 blend of Castrol Edge, most notably because it has served me well in the past. It's a reliable brand and it meets BMW LL01 standards. And although it wasn't the biggest discount in the world, I couldn't help myself when I saw that Molly Gen was on sale and try out the best of the best motor oils in the M235i, which is also a daily driven car. And for frame of reference, it is a stage two with a downpipe. So nothing too crazy, but we are running a little bit more power than a stock M235i. But unfortunately, we don't have two engines to run complete side-by-side -side comparisons throughout their lifespans. One using Molly Gen and the other one using Castrol Edge. And then getting to take a look at the internal components to see the actual wear of the engine and seeing if the difference in price is actually worth it. So we're gonna be taking it from the perspective of the daily driver. So we're gonna look at things like smoothness, sound, MPGs, as well as the metal shavings that come off the end of the magnetic drain plug. And the other interesting element about Molly Gen comes in the form of that green tint. And although it might seem really gimmicky, when you consider the fact that the N55 engine has common fail points like the valve cover gasket as well as the oil pan gasket, if you use Molly Gen and go over those areas with a black light, you'll be able to confirm whether or not that you actually have an oil leak in those areas. But in order to first do that, let's change out the oil. The oil change on the N55 is pretty simple and only takes about 20 minutes using jack stands. Once the car is up and supported, open the hood, loosen the oil filter cap, and loosen the oil cap. This will allow laminar flow once we remove the drain plug. Now we can go underneath the car and drain the oil, for which we have a convenient panel hiding the plug. As you can see, we have some metal shavings from the Castro blend. And I would have loved to compare this next go around, but this plug actually broke and I had to order another one. Good thing I still had the OEM one laying around. As we let the rest of the oil drain, let's prep the new filter and gaskets. If your inner housing comes apart like this, don't worry, it's easy to put back. Just reinsert the spring followed by the top cover and push it back in. Then line up the tabs at the top of the housing to the inner filter and press it into place. Using a pick tool, remove the two gaskets on the housing and before applying the new gaskets, which are supplied with your filter, we'll coat them with some new oil. Points to liquid molly for this pour spout which will make adding in the oil much easier. Once the gaskets are secured, we can press in our oil filter and reinsert the housing before torquing it to 25 Newton meters. By now the oil should be done draining and we can place in our plug, which is also torqued to 25 Newton meters. At last, we can add in our 6.9 quarts of liquid molly. And I'd like to add in the 1.9 quarts first, then dump in the five quart bottle after. And make sure to get every drop you can because we paid premium dollar for this. With the oil changed, start up the car 
and check for leaks. If you want to, you can even use a black light in the areas where you suspect the leak because the Molly Gen will actually light up in the presence of a black light indicating that there is a leak or at least some oil spilled in the area. And then you can keep an eye on it from there. Once you've ensured that there are no leaks, go ahead and close it all up, lower the car and jump inside. By now the system should be warmed up enough to check the oil level, which takes about a minute and a half. If the oil level is short, top off as needed before resetting the service light. The service light can be accessed in accessory mode and by holding down the trip meter. Continue to hold down the button until your trip miles go from zero, then back to what they were before. And then it will go into your services. Single press to toggle through the menu until you get to your oil. It should say reset possible. If so, hold down the button until it asks you to confirm the reset. And then press and hold again to confirm. And you'll see a reset in progress message pop up. After the reset has been completed, double check it in the iDrive menu system. And it looks like I have a few services to do and one I did not reset the light for. But at least the oil service light is reset. Now on to our tests. First up, sound. I sit in the same place about 5 feet away to measure idle sound and both would give readings from 37 to 39 decibels. So no real difference there. Next is smoothness, which is subjective but I do always notice the car runs a bit smoother after an oil change, as was the case here. Unfortunately, I can't say if it was smoother than my normal oil change, but it's definitely within the range that I expect. Third is warm up time. As expected, it took a little bit more time to warm up at about four minutes and 23 seconds on average. Depending on the day, that is 19 to 43 seconds longer than the previous batch of oil. It's also worth mentioning that the days leading up to the oil change were warmer than the days following the change. Our final test is what I was the most excited for, fuel economy, which ended up with similar results when compared to Castro. Depending on traffic, I normally get about 230 to 260 miles before needing to fill up. And roughly that's an average of 19 to 21 miles per gallon. That is pretty much what I got during this one month long test. So unfortunately, it looks like Molly Gen netted us the same results as Castrol Edge, at least from the driver's perspective over the course of a month, which is about a thousand miles or so, which is really good for those of you who are using Castrol Edge, but a hard pill to swallow for anybody who's using Molly Gen or considering using it. The other thing that we have to take into consideration is that this was a shorter test and not the most in depth because we didn't look at things like the engine internals to determine whether or not that there's a difference between wear of the two oils. And we also weren't able to look at the differences between the metal shavings at the end of the magnetic drain plug. Another good point that was brought up to me is that my engine right now is saturated with Castrol Edge and all of its additives. But perhaps after a few cycles of Molly Gen and giving the engine a chance to soak up those additives, we'll notice a difference at that point in time. And if there is, I'll also post an update. And I'm very sorry that this video didn't show a dramatic difference between Castrol Edge and Molly Gen, but that's exactly why we do these tests. And if you have any additional questions, please leave it for me down in the comment section below. If you need any of the resources at all, it's gonna be down in the description links. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And I'll see all of you in the next one.